Hi guys, you remember puberty, don't you? Teenage years, you might have been a little bit awkward. So I want to give you an analogy for GRE studying math that kind of relates to that awkward phase you might have experienced as a teenager. So let's say that this fellow over on the left here is you, age, I don't know, 15 or 16. And you know a little bit about how to behave in the adult world, but a lot of what you do might come kind of come across as awkward because you have some of the skills necessary, but you haven't really mastered those adult skills yet. And that's understandable, you know, you're a teenager. So I think a lot of us go through that. I certainly did when I was that young. So one thing that I encounter for people with the GRE in the quant section is that they do a lot of work. So let's say somebody comes to me, they put in about a hundred hours of work and they started off, let's say, at a 145 and now they're at a 153. This is just a hypothetical person, not everybody, you know, will improve at this pace. But let's say that they are, you know, they put in all this work, but they haven't really improved that much. And they really do know a lot of things, but it's not showing up in their score. So that is what I would call the awkward phase, that you've done a bunch of work but it hasn't really translated to a big improvement. And I'll kind of explain why. So think about math studying as a pyramid. So let's say you build the foundation. This is conceptual skill. So let's say we're talking about going through the ETS math review to learn concepts and maybe practicing them with Khan Academy. So that's what I recommend to kind of make sure you know the basics. And in my study plans on my blog, you'll see that. This stage is definitely not enough to get GRE style questions right. <clears throat> but let's say you continue to build the pyramid. Now you do a bunch of practice with the Manhattan five pound book. And that's where you can do, you know, 40 questions of any given topic because they have a crap load of questions in there. It's five pounds. So you do all that work and maybe you even do a bunch of say a bunch of ETS stuff. Maybe you even do most of the ETS stuff. And you say to yourself, hey, I've done maybe a hundred hours of math practice. Why am I still at a 153? And you might get discouraged at that point. Well, I have good news for you. The good news, my friend, is that you're closer than you think. Because if you are in the awkward phase of kind of being halfway good at everything, it's really hit or miss if you're going to get a random GRE question right. The, so the good news is you're close. You just need to get over the hump. So you need to continue to work and put some more layers on the pyramid, which I'm now realizing looks more like a ziggurat or maybe a birthday cake. You just need more ETS experience. And you even need to do more ETS problems Maybe you'll mix in some ETS Big Book. Maybe you'll even do some GMAT. And what that's going to do for you, it's going to get you from being kind of good at a, a given concept to actually good once you get enough experience to feel confident and once you get enough experience to, you know, have seen it all pretty much. You've seen the, the concept from tons and tons of different angles, tons of different wordings, and you feel like you're good at it. So keep in mind, as you guys study quant, you may put in a lot of work and feel like you're spinning your wheels. Just persevere. If you continue to work to the point where you're actually good at concepts, it, that just takes a little bit more time and more experience, that's when you're going to see it show up in your score. That's when you're going to be more adaptable and versatile when you practice and when you take the real test.